Hello, Facebook friends. I'm Allison Camerata. Thanks so much for joining us for this chat. We're going to be talking about the movie South Side with you. It opens today. today. It opens today, and it is. It follows the first date of Barack Obama and Michelle, then Robinson, and what they did on this date. And we are excited to be joined by one of the stars of the movie. We have Parker Sawyers here, as well as the writer-director, Richard Tanney. Great to have you guys. You look like Barack Obama. Ever heard that before? Yes, especially when I shave. Yeah, I, I resemble him. Uh, we got the long face, and but I mean, really, when I'm in character, you know, uh, he cocks his head to the side and his eyes droop a bit, and then it's a little <laughs> more like him. Yeah. But also, the, you've you've cracked his cadence, mm. which is sort of how would you describe it? Sort of like abbreviated or like truncated? Like how do you uh, describe his manner of speaking? It's kind of. It's kind of tired, if I'm honest. I think he's, always, he's just like, I think he reads a lot, he thinks a lot, so it's all, it's always like this. Uh, he's always thinking and just trying to get the words out and express his opinion. So true. Yeah. That is really well done. Yeah. Um, so, Richard, when you, when you found Parker, were you like jackpot? Yeah, to be honest, I, I kind of got a little choked up because it's such a difficult role for a young actor to step into. I mean, not only are you playing someone that we see on TV every night, but you're, you're, you're also having to turn that iconic person into a relatable romantic lead. So uh, it was tough to find the right person. And then, and then this guy, you know, pops out of pretty much nowhere. I mean, he's been in a, a lot of big movies, but walk on tiny, 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 tiny yeah walls. like what First, what have you been in jack ryan zero dark 30. uh oh. i don't know but blink, blinker Small blinker stuff. you miss it yeah. kinds of parts yeah. i mean he's only been acting five years so that's understandable but this is his first lead role in a movie, and he commands the screen. And even from the the first audition tape, it was it was clear that you know there there was a lot going on there. Um, so I needed somebody who could be who could play goofy, intellectual, somebody who could play charming, a bit arrogant and cocky, and he just he pulled out all the stops. So uh, you know. <laughs> no, it's true. I mean, yeah. I think that you nailed it, and a lot of people have said that. You know, Washington Post said you have that uncannily spot on. Um, depiction right. of Barack Obama. Well, yeah, I'm a pretty good mimic, and so I think that's that's why I just watched how he moves in like town halls, and then like the candid moments if they're visiting like Martha's Vineyard. So I could just see him when he's not at the podium um, to get like the private the private Obama as much as I could. And then you had to go back in time, so you had to study him now, but try to figure out what he was like in his 20s. Yeah, and then but then I built that 28 year old Obama on uh, the confidence of a man who moved around when he was younger. He had a varied background. He's mixed race. He's got an interesting perspective on the world. He, um, you know, he went to the Occidental, then traveled across the country to go to Columbia. And so that's what made him confident. He was comfortable in his own skin. And it wasn't just like a brash confidence. I agree. I think you captured that swagger. Thanks. Yeah, no, it's, that part is really good. So how did you figure out what they did on their first date? Well, the, the, the contours of the first date, the sort of, uh, uh, you know, the linchpins of where they went and the activities they did, it's pretty well documented. They've talked about it in interviews. Um, it's referenced in Audacity of Hope, maybe even in Dreams from My Father, but I definitely remember Audacity of Hope. So the, the big ones are the kiss outside Baskin Robbins. They went to go see Do the Right Thing opening weekend and ran into a partner at the law firm. Uh, they went to the Art Institute. So all, all those things are in the movie. Um, and it was really just about sort of filling in the details and kind of doing my homework, doing my research, and about their lives, about maybe what their world views were, getting a sense of who the characters were going to be at that stage in their lives, and then, you know, uh, kind of imagining the dialogue and imagining what uh, they might have said and how they connected and how they clashed. And they really, one of the gr great discoveries for me is they, they came from such different backgrounds and they, they had a lot of that old romance screwball quality of opposites attracting. Mm -hmm. So it was fun to get them kind of, you know, the sparks flying. That is fun because that, that like repartee of learning who each other is, I thought that you did really well. Here's a question from one of our Facebook viewers. What was your favorite scene in the movie to do? I loved uh, the bar scene. Um, it's when it's like three, I guess, three fourths into the date. And it's when they really connect. They let their guard down. And Michelle sort of tells Bar Barack Obama the truth about himself. And yeah, it's a great beat. How about you? Um, I think my favorite uh, scene to shoot was when we were in the movie theater and they're, they're, they're in a packed audience watching Do the Right Thing opening weekend. It's one of my favorite films. One of the, you know, Spike Lee, one of his masterpieces. 
Um, and it, for me as a film geek, it was just amazing to recreate that movie going experience. There was so, such controversy and excitement surrounding the release of that movie at that time. Uh, so I just had fun being in a movie theater. I've spent a lot of time in movie theaters um, in my life and it was really cool to just have that meta moment of uh, we're watching them watch a movie. Mm. <laughs> I've forgotten what's reality at this point. Yeah. Um, so I mean, speaking as, uh, of you being a film geek, the highest praise I saw um, given to this movie, which was that it reminded one of the critics of Richard, Richard Linkletter's right. Before Sunrise. Right. I mean, there's no more charming romantic movie right. than that movie. Right, yeah. Did you model it a little bit on that? Well, I mean, Linklater is a big influence for me, a big filmmaker, not just the, the, the Before Sunrise trilogy, but all of his movies, uh, which have a, a similar quality. They, they're, they're preoccupied with time and how time passes, whether it's between two people or whether it's boyhood and it's the kid going from you know uh, six years old to 18. Um, but certainly I love the Before Sunrise movies, but those movies, or the first one, was really a gateway drug for me to another filmmaker called Eric Romer. He was a, he was a French filmmaker that came out of the, the new wave in the 60s, started off as a critic, like Truffaut, and a lot of the other guys, and he pioneered the walk and talk movie. He's got about 20 to 25 movies, maybe more, uh, give or take, that are about, pretty much just about a, a guy and a girl walking, and um, they're they're just they're 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 concerned with the mundane minutia of relationships between people. Yeah. And so between those and the Linklater movies and some of the old screwball romances, the Preston Sturges movies, Ernst Lubitsch, Shop Around the Corner type of stuff, I just love I love the genre, and and it was really great to sort of do my pale, unworthy riff. Yeah, I mean it was great. That is obviously what you modeled it on. And is that hard as an actor to constantly be in motion? while you're delivering your lines? No, I mean, uh, it was a great exercise, let's put it that way. Uh, we learned, I learned the entire script like a play. I rehearsed it every single night for seven nights before I went to Chicago. And, um, no, nah, but it's cool, because you find the nuances between what could be, not, not like, boring language it could be if I don't do my job right. And so, yeah, it was a great exercise, a good challenge, and I met it, I believe. I do yeah. believe that is true. Um, here's another question from our viewers. Have you heard from the Obamas about this movie? Um, well, we heard, so John Legend is one of our executive producers, and he was saying a few days ago that he spoke to the Obamas, uh, he spoke to the president about the movie recently, and um, just told the president that it's a great movie, he really thinks that the president and first lady will enjoy it, um, and I'm pretty sure he made a copy available for them, or the invites there, so... Yeah, you know, we'll, we'll see. When you say made a copy, it sounds like a bootleg. Yeah, yeah, he, yeah, he gave him a VHS copy. <laughs> exactly, they can watch it at their home with right. VHS. Right. Um, but it must, I mean, don't you think it would be a little bit awkward for them to watch the depiction of their first of date? Yeah, it's Probably. gotta be weird. Yeah. yeah, it's gotta be strange. No, it's a weird, it's a weird concept for a movie. Um, at least when you first hear it. But then you kind of get wrapped up in it. It'd be interesting if, to know if when they watch it, are they able to just get wrapped up in it as a movie, or is it just too is there's too much of a distance. Too close, yeah, yeah. right. Um, one of the things that you also talked about in the movie was the, his um, previous girlfriends. Mm -hmm. right. And, you know, that, there's still a question about that because in his autobiography, didn't he make one character a composite? How did yeah, you figure yeah. out what to do about his previous girlfriend? Well, I don't go into too many specifics about it. Um, it's, sort of, it's sort of just about one. Michelle asks the question of, you know, do you, did you only ever date white girls? And so he goes into a story about one specific uh, uh, white ex-girlfriend of his and why that relationship didn't work out. And it has to do with the, 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 the sort of racial disparity. But was that a real person? Um, that was sort of inspired by the composite as well as one of his real girlfriends did, ex-girlfriends did sort of come out and uh, some of her letters were released and there were interviews with her. Um, so, yeah, just kind of uh, whatever was out there, kind of culling from that, yeah. Got it. Next question. Uh, do you think this will have an effect on the election? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't know how. I mean, well, that it makes them seem charming and relatable and human and romantic. But they and, are charming and relatable. And, and they're also not running right now. Yeah, that's so, right. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> so they will not win a third term, I guess, <laughs> even if the movie is You're, a huge... You remember no matter what? Union when yeah. he was like, he was like, uh, he was like, I won, or what did he say? He goes, yeah. and I'm not running any more campaigns, so 
and then somebody cheered and he goes, I know that because I won both of them. Yeah. yeah <laughs> that great. is good. Well, thank you. That appreciate is... that. So you <laughs> were you. doing a, you were doing an Obama impression before yeah. you ever thought that you ever knew of this movie. Right. I thought like in 10 or 15 years I'd play him. And so I was just working on it. I was like, I got 10 years to practice. And then, uh, yeah, but then this movie came along. And yeah. There's a lesson in there for all of us, I think. Just start doing impressions, and you too can be a movie star. That's right. uh, Parker Sawyers, Richard Tanney, thanks so much for talking to us about the Thank movie. You. Really great movie. Fun to watch. Appreciate it. Thanks, everybody. See you next time.